Hi there. Have you ever asked yourself, why are you a Lutheran, a Baptist, an Evangelical Christian? Why am I a Catholic? Well, we have all of our reasons, but for me, I had no choice. I realized that if I wasn't a Catholic, I'd be living a lie. Now, that sounds kind of harsh, but it's true. I would be closing my mind on what the Bible teaches about his church. I'd be putting myself ahead of what logically made sense. So let me explain, and I hope this makes sense to you. The logic comes in three parts. First, we know that God is all-powerful and all-knowing, and therefore is never wrong. Pretty cut and dry. Second, we know that his church can never be wrong because it says so in the Bible, that the church is the pillar and foundation of truth. Now, how could it be the pillar and foundation of truth if it ever lied? If it ever lies in a single area, then how could anyone know if it's not lying in another area? Makes no sense at all to say that the church is the pillar and foundation of truth on one hand, and then say it lies on the other hand. Makes no sense at all to me. So to believe in the Bible means to know that the church can't be wrong when it comes to faith and morals. And finally, since we know the church is made up of people, sinful people, the only way the church can't ever be wrong is if God protects it from its sinful self. That is the only way for the church to never be wrong. And we know this to be true again because the Bible says so. It tells us that Jesus will build his church and protect it from Satan, the father of lies. So then we get to the key question when it comes to who is Jesus's church. Can you prove that your church is and always was the pillar and foundation of truth? See, the is is easy because it's self-fulfilling. All denominations believe that everything they teach is the truth. None of them believe that they're teaching falsehood. It's the always was where we separate truth from falsehood. You can't just look at the church only from the perspective of today. The church was born on Pentecost in 33 AD, and that is when the pillar and foundation of truth, the church, began. And if you can't prove your church began at Pentecost, well, then that means it's man-made. So the next big question then is, when did your church, your pillar and foundation of truth, begin? Well, the correct answer is 33 AD. But who even makes that claim? Well, the Catholic Church makes the claim that it began at Pentecost, whereas the Protestants don't even attempt to make that claim. Their truth goes back as far as the 16th century. But what about the first 15 centuries? What about those Christians? Do they even matter? Would I be able to find a Lutheran or a Baptist in, let's say, 500 AD? How about an evangelical Christian in 800 AD? If the truth you believe today can't be found, then who got it wrong? You or the church? The evidence is there, and it's really clear. You can find people in every century at all times who Catholics today would agree with. And every council starting from Nicaea in 325 AD aligns with Catholicism. You just won't find a single Lutheran, Baptist, Evangelical Christian, or any other Protestant denomination for arguably the first 1,500 years of the church. Not one. Their pillar and foundation of truth was nowhere to be seen. If you lived between 33 AD and 800 AD, you were either a Catholic or a heretic or a non-believer in Jesus. So in closing, I'm Catholic because the truth needs to stand the test of time for all time and not just a certain period that aligns with my beliefs. How can I possibly be a Protestant if I can't find another person, yet alone a group in the first thousand plus years of the church that believed like me makes no sense and is actually kind of arrogant, as if the truth eluded his protected church for 1,500 years. Being a Catholic allows me to prove truth yesterday, is truth today, and then will be truth tomorrow, because Jesus protects his church. What a beautiful thing to know how the Catholic church has always been protected and always protected the truth since Pentecost. And all the thanks and glory of this go to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So I hope this helped a little bit. And uh, God bless you on your faith journey. Until next time, bye-bye.